Last one. It's not a question. It's a request. Oh, gosh. In Here honor go. of the seven-year anniversary of the Percy Harvin trade, I want you to look into the camera and say we have no intent to trade Stephon Diggs. Will you do that for me? <laughs> Stephon Diggs is a Minnesota Viking. That's, right. why. that's good. That, that meant absolutely nothing. Go. No, he is today. May not be tomorrow, but that's all right. Oh, how true that ended up being. That was Rick Spielman with us a little more than six weeks ago at the scouting combine for the world turned upside down. The Vikings turned upside down offensively with that trade that sent Stephon Diggs to the Buffalo Bills for a first round pick, a fifth round pick and a sixth round pick this year and a fourth round pick next year. So let's start on our NFC North draft needs, Chris. The Minnesota Vikings cannot leave the draft that begins two weeks from today without what? Oh, Oh, yeah, baby, man, Mike, your Minnesota Vikings got a lot of work to do. All right. That's the first thing I know for sure. I mean, I mean, what an off season so far, but I think the thing I look at more than anything with Mike Zimmer, all right, it's debatable, Mike, what is it? It's a DB or a wide receiver that jumps out to me. It's one of those two. And I would say they got to come away in this draft with a DB. I mean, losing, you know, Mackenzie Alexander, Trey Wayne, Xavier Rhodes, all gone. Mike Zimmer's a defensive coach. You know, I got to think that's priority number one for this Minnesota Vikings team that has a bunch of holes to fill in their roster right now. Yeah, look, I think they'll be fine at defensive back because Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman do a nice job of finding talented guys wherever they may be, including a Holton Hill who was undrafted, and coaching them up into better players than maybe they would have been. I'm comfortable with Mike Hughes and Holton Hill, assuming that Hughes can stay healthy and Hill can stay on the right side of the league's substance abuse and other policies. He got a PED suspension So you're not well comfortable with them. You can't be that comfortable well, with them. You just said it. <laughs> well, well, but I'm comfortable that the Vikings will find guys somehow, some way who can come in and be right. coached up and play. I'm far more concerned about the offensive line, Chris, because the thing about Kirk Cousins is very simple. Kirk Cousins is is adept at running the play that is called. When the world begins to crumble around him, Kirk Cousins is not skilled when it comes to improvising, when it comes to the second play. You know, with Patrick Mahomes, there's the play that they want him to run, then there's the play that he later decides he has to run when the first play falls apart. Kirk Cousins doesn't have that in his tool bag. So the offensive line needs to hold together long enough to let Kirk Cousins deliver the football to whoever is open. And I'm not concerned about the receiver position because they love B.C. Johnson. Adam Thielen is still one of the best receivers in the NFL. Irv Smith, tight end they drafted last year. He can step up as a pass catcher this year. Kyle Rudolph is still there. They'll be fine if Kirk Cousins can deliver the football to whoever is open. The key to me is the offensive line has to be good enough to allow Cousins to do it. And I still think that the offensive line's a work in progress. Well, yeah, it's not the best offensive line in football. That's for sure. I, you know, and yeah, I hear you. Improvements need to be made uh, for the future and depth and everything like that. But it's still a solid unit. I mean, they could run the football and Kirk Cousins, you're right. He's not going to be that type of guy. So it'd be interesting. I'm actually shocked that you went that way. I thought you were going to want to want to replace Stefan Diggs and get a receiver in the draft, Mike. Now, look, they have found their best receivers late in the draft or undrafted like an Adam Thielen. Every time they roll the dice on a first round guy, a high round guy, it ends up being a disappointment. So I'm not saying they shouldn't draft any receivers. I just don't think that it's top priority with those two first round picks. I'd use both of those first round picks on offensive linemen. All right. The Packers can't leave the draft without what? Uh, a speed receiver. Can we please give Aaron Rodgers a speed damn receiver? Okay. I mean, when I look at the Packers, the only thing I really look at, okay, on their team, hey, yes, offensive line, you know, they're going to have to watch and, and start building that. Bakhtiari is going into the last year of his contract. They got to upgrade or, there. Or and Bakhtiari. Stuff. Or Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari. Bulaga's gone. So there's things like that. Would I like to see them get bigger in the middle of their defense? Sure. But I know a speed receiver. Yes, they need somebody opposite of Devontae Adams. I know they signed Devin Funches. And I like that because Rodgers can throw to big guys and he's a great back shoulder thrower. But they need a guy that scares defenses and opens up Devin Funtish and Avante Adams and lets Avante Adams run all this nuanced route running. So that to me, I mean, I've been starving that for that for, for Aaron Rodgers for six years now. So I would like to see that happen.
I agree with you there. Nothing more for me to say when it comes to the Packers. The Bears can't leave the draft without what? Yeah, the Bears, you know, it's an interesting discussion. The defense is fine, in my opinion. Maybe they could use a corner, but I think they got some corners there. They signed Artie Burns. They got a kid, Tolliver, who's really good, opposite of Fuller. You know, I think that they're okay there. They might need some depth. I think the biggest thing with the Bears that is unimpressive to me is their tackle play. Their tackle play last year was horrible. You know, they got some good guys in the middle uh, as far as Daniels at guard and Cody Whitehair, who play, they're both kind of a guard center combination, but they're tackles who just, yeah, they're getting up there in age and they didn't play that well. I know they signed Jermaine Effetti, but I think tackle is the biggest thing going forward for this Bears team. They got to come out with one in the second or third round of this draft. They don't have many picks. You say all the time that quarterbacks get too much money, they get too much praise, they're too much focus. But here's the thing. When the quarterback doesn't play well, the quarterback gets dumped on when the reality is maybe he's not playing well because he doesn't have any time to the man, execute Mike. the offense. Right? The offensive line needs to be there for Mitchell Trubisky, Nick Foles, whoever ends up behind center for the Chicago Bears. All right, the Detroit Lions can't leave the draft without what, Chris? So you were agreeing with me with the Bears thing. You think yeah, it's offensive I'm, I'm line agree- too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, and they couldn't run the ball. It was crap. Um, All right, the Detroit Lions, I I mean, this is an easy one, too. Matt Patricia, he's a defensive head coach. Their butts are on the line there this year. They were the worst pass defense in football last year. They lost Darius Slay. They need cornerbacks badly. They need an elite cornerback. Now, I don't know if you take one at pick number three. I know a lot of people think, like, they might take the Ohio State kid, Okuda, at number three. I'd be a little scared with any corner that's an island corner that runs in the high four fours. Uh, I don't know if that's worth number three. I think the Lions could be a trade down team, but cornerback and multiple ones, Mike, I think have to be on the radar for the for the uh, radar for the Lions for as bad as their pass defense was last year. And of course, we know they want to play a lot of man to man because this is Bill Belichick, Matt Patricia defense. I want impact player up front and where the Lions are drafting should put them in position to get one. I'm I'm tempted if I'm the Lions to trade down. Yeah. But but I don't want to blow the shot at getting somebody who can come in and be a difference maker right away. It's kind of what Ron Rivera was talking about with Washington. With the second overall pick, you can get a great player like a Chase Young. You trade down, do you get that player who's going to come in, make a huge difference, a, a Nick Bosa type of a difference right away that can transform a team? That's what the Lions need. They need one guy who was going to come in and have the kind of impact that Nick Bosa had for the 49ers last year because that's the the guy who's going to save jobs in Detroit because the heat is on Matt Patricia and GM Bob Quinn in 2020. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.